Sure, my name is Sam Tabib. Uh, the main function why I'm here is because I'm a co-founder and CEO of Chip One Exchange in main seated in Germany, a headquarter, and uh, we're a distributor of electronic components. Okay, um, you work in about more than 30 countries, I believe. Um, do you think diversity is important in your company? Uh, definitely, I mean, that's the edge we have over the competition because uh, we're the only company within Europe that can service all, I would say, what, 27 languages that are being spoken in, uh, spoken in um, Europe. Every country, every culture has their own preferences, their own way of doing business, their own cultural background that influences, again, business. So every country is different. And that's why we hire, if I want to sell to Hungary, it doesn't make sense for me hire a German that speaks English to sell to Hungary. I prefer hiring a Hungarian guy. One, because he speaks the language, or a Hungarian girl, they speak the language. And second of all, they have the cultural background, so people can identify with them. Sasan, you uh, created the Chip One company by yourself. Um, how did the idea pop up? Uh, it was not an idea of my, of my own. It was uh, me and my two best friends. We still have the company together. I was living in the US, and first I waited in some restaurants, then one day a guest showed up in my restaurant and uh, he, I, he liked the way I entertained him more or less and he gave me a business card of his and uh, he was actually looking for somebody who speaks German and since I fulfilled that requirement and then I added on top that I speak English, German, Persian, French so he invited me over for an interview and then I started working in his company and they were in this business trading of microelectronics so I started working for them and then I got an offer from a big US company out of this field, went to that company and then I took my two best friends from Germany, they came to the US and then we all worked for this US company and then we went back to Germany, opened the branch there but then things didn't work out with the headquarter and then we decided to open our own company. We opened our company in 01 that was, uh, and since then most of the companies in our business have gone away actually and we're the only one who really uh, expanded on a, on a high level. The reason is one, as I mentioned before, that uh, we have every single language, we have an employee that speaks it on a mother language level. And that's one key. The other ones are the, you know, that we try to be t trustworthy, deliver quality, uh, keep up to our promises, just general, general things that you should have to follow in business. The company where I used to work for, the owner had a very good statement that follows me up today. He says, in our business, the only limitation that we have is our people. To put that in an example for you, I rather would have a great salesperson for Nigeria, which has very limited production and is therefore very limited uh, potential for us, than having an average salesperson for Italy, which is a much bigger market. So for me, it's more important what type of salesperson you have because the salesperson in our business makes a big difference. And how do you select them? So many factors that make up a good salesperson. That you can't, like in the beginning, we would hire like the people based on two, three interviews. But then I figured you can't get the right answer or the right feeling after two interviews. So what we created now is we have four days of training full time. So these people come in, they get the training four days. And it's actually very good because after four days, we know if they would have the right potential and actually they can also better measure if our company is the right environment for them to spend valuable time of their life with us. I never thought about, you know, that I'm an entrepreneur or that's what my goal is. I always thought I would end up being a, either a soccer star or a stand-up comedian, but that's where life took me, so. And you happy with that choice? Yeah, sure. You sure. think you're going to do that forever or would you maybe want to change? I don't know. Life has taught me not to make too many long to implant. It's good to have some kind of plan in your mind, but life changes every day and you just got to react to all the circumstances. Could you tell us a bit about Dubai? How, how do you like it? How is it? I love Dubai. Although, <laughs> well, with our company we're there, then we have also, I have a, what they call it, real estate company there and we have a lot of investments there and due to this financial crisis, Dubai took a strong hit, but I love Dubai, I love being there, it's a lot of factors why I do that, but... Uh, and what about the people? Well, what I love about Dubai is the diversity, I mean, you, you go somewhere, 
you meet, you know, you go into a bar, you see uh, 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 women dressed, uh, what they call it in English, tell me. In, in Arabic, they call hijab. You know, oh, this, uh, they're dressed like that. Next to that, there is a girl sitting in a sexy bikini, and you have all different kind of cultures, nationalities sitting all together in peace, living together. And that's great.